The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 18th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, uh, I was uh, trying to multitask there, folks, and I lost my uh, train of thought. But here's what I do know. Sorry about that. Sorry about losing that train of thought. But here's what I do know, and that is this. Life is always happening for us, not to us. And once you and I can uh, find that, uh, we, what we can do is we can, we, whoa, totally botch it. We can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. See, I'm going to go find a gift based upon my stumbling and bumbling here. And that means we're going to go ahead and get the uh, show started. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. Phone lines are open. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on, fan, uh, no, it's Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. You've got the Dow down 621 points. That's one and eight tenths percent. Oh, it is Tuesday. That's why I was so messed up there. My my day's all screwed up. Sorry about that, folks. Um, but you, you kind of knew what I meant out there. Uh, the S&P is off nearly 2% or 89 points. The NASDAQ, 102 and 3 tenths percent. The Russell 2000, 2.8. The semi 3.6, 140 points. Hopefully everybody out there had a magnificent Monday out there. I know I did. And uh, we've got a caller on the line. So with the caller on the line, we have call ahead seating. Not much I do know. Let's go to Scott in uh, Colorado Springs. Scott, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, Steve? Very good. Happy New Year to you. Nice to hear your voice, even though I know we're 18 days into the New Year, but I still don't mind saying that uh, to you. So Happy hopefully New you Year. Nice yes, sir. Yeah. Do you have a nice New Year's? I did. I did. Did you? I Yeah. Uh, very quiet. It was a very quiet, uh, yeah. but the, all all the football that was on, yeah, it was it was. Uh, I thought it was great out there. So thanks yeah. for asking. Um, hey. How's the weather out there, at Colorado Springs today? Right now, it's beautiful. We're going to get a little bit of winter, but you know, down here, it's 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 not near as bad as up north. <laughs> ah, that's good. Good, 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 good. So Caterpillar, which is trading out at two twenty eight thirty one right now, uh, tell us what you're doing and how I could best help you. Well, I'm I'm long from 201. Um, I'm wondering uh, on the weekly chart if you see that it could get back to 246. Well, if we just simply use just our profile information, which is what we've got up on our screen right now, uh, three days ago, price closed above the top of a bear structured daily profile. So that's bullish. You're well above a weekly profile. And price is trading with inside the monthly. So being above the center, which is 219.25, that then does bring into a price target of 246.69. No idea how long it might take to get up there, but yes, that 246 looks like it is in play. Now, what we want to do here, Scott, is go take a look at our daily, weekly, and monthly time frames and see if there's any other kind of signals out here that we need to be aware of. Well, the first signal is a couple days ago was the TD9 count top. That was on a trading session of November 13th. The very next day on Friday, price closed above that high. That negated that pattern. That tells us about a strong upward momentum move out there. Now, the only pattern that you have to be concerned with is prices moving higher, doing less relative energy, and as long as that pattern remains out there, if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would then suggest to move back to the 221 level. So you're in at 201. Um, 
if you get that signal, I don't know what you might want to do. Well, we don't have you don't have to worry about that right now because we don't have that pattern that is in play out here. And Caterpillar is suggesting at least its next move on the daily time frame up to about the 244.33 level. That is the next area where price had broken down from. Any questions about the daily chart before I switch over to the weekly or and monthly for you, Scott? No, sir. Perfect. We go take a look at the weekly chart. You're only going to be in bar number six of a TD9 count. 244.33 also happens to be its breakdown level. I believe that tied into what we looked at on the daily time frame. So it does appear that price is headed to that area. Any questions on the weekly chart? No. Nope. Good to go. Perfect. Perfect. Monthly, I don't have any signal out here uh, that tells us anything other than over time, price wants to get that 246.69. So 246 or 244.33, those would be the price targets. And the only thing that should get in the way or could get in the way then, if you were to see some type of bearish reversal candle, as long as a Rose momentum indicator signal remains in effect, and then you're looking at a pullback to support, which I would say would really be in about the 221-ish type area out there. So everything looks pretty good in Caterpillar. And a nice job on an entry there and a nice job on this trade. Scott, is there anything else that I can help you out with, whether it's a Caterpillar or anything else? No, sir. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Well, perfect. Scott, always great to hear from you, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again sometime soon. Fantastic, Steve. Thank you. You bet. That was Scott in wonderful Colorado screen, uh, Springs. Nothing like uh, hey, nothing like the uh, Broadmoor Resort out there. And taking a quick uh, ride. Well, you can't take a quick ride up to Pikes Peak because if you do, you'll you'll get out of breath pretty quickly. Uh, and I know that for a fact. Well, at least Stevie got out of breath. Okay, so let's get to the uh, uh, markets out here. At least with, with regard to what they're doing in the short term time frame. And so what I'm going to do is switch over to the equity future chart. So I'm going to go switch over to the 30 minute time frame. If you give me just a moment here we'll switch screens and as we switch screens i had mentioned to uh tucker inside the tiger's den that uh, we should see at least a rally attempt now i was basing that conclusion tucker on the fact that the es mini in the upper left hand side is in the process of forming bar nine of a td9 count so too is the russell 2000 in the lower right hand corner so we got those two corners upper left lower right that have got td9 counts in the case of the nq we don't have that pattern but what we do have out here that depends upon the close during this uh, 130 bar but if price closes back above the low from uh, noon that low out there specifically is 15 254.50. If price closes above that, it still has its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So you'd have three with bottoming signals. And in the case of the uh, Dow, it too could form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So, Tucker, I do still believe that we should see some type of rally attempt. Ow. Where could this rally attempt take us to? Let's take a look at each of the charts. So the first play thing we're going to look at, in fact, I'll expand them out. We'll look at them one at a time. And uh, this way I can uh, back it up just a tad. So we can see the TD9 count. That should form here. We've got another 16 minutes before we get a confirmation of that. <clears throat> so the first bounce level should take us up to that oscillator and change line. What I would say, Tucker, since that is so near the center of that bullish structure profile, that price closed below, that really becomes a target. That's 4580.70. That's the ES mini. If you were to see a close above 4580, let's call it 4581, then you should see price run up to 4605. So that's going to be that first counter trend move out there. No idea whether price will get up there. No idea whether it will take that level out. What I do know is if it does take out 4581, we should move to 4606. That's the ES mini. In the case of the NQ out here, its first target really becomes its oscillator and change line, which is also the bottom of its profile. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention to my clock out there. We got cut off. We were taking a look at the NQ out here. We can see that it already has a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal out there. That was confirmed at 12 noon. And as long price remain, as long as price continues to close above that low, 15,254.50, then you still have your. Uh, confirmed bottom. What we're looking for here is really confirmed bottoms for all four of the 30-minute equity future timeframes out here to then signal that we've got at least some type of rally attempt. So let's go take a look at the Dow equity future contract now. Uh, or if I didn't give you all the numbers, the first level is going to be the bottom of that uh, profile on the 30-minute basis, 15,288. Above that, you've got 15,326, and above that, 15,383. Those would be your battleground levels. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, uh, this is forming, or appears to be forming, a Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal. Still have 11 minutes left in this session, but as long as we get a bullish reversal candle, then we will have that. The first level of resistance where price is targeting right now, it's the bottom of the profile. And then it's oscillator and change line. So the real level to be watching here is going to be the 35,250 level. If price can close above that, we're looking at a move to 35,369. And above that, we'd be looking at a move to 35,577. So you want to take these things one step at a time. At least in this case here, you know where the sellers are, or at least where the battleground is. In the case of the Russell 2000, it's forming, appears to be forming both wave number seven, a, 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 a TD9 count, its first target would become its oscillator and change line. And that's up at the 2113 level. If price can get above now, as price moves higher, should price move higher, that's going to move up by a buck or two. So let's call it 2115. If price is able to close above 2115, you're looking to move to 2128. If it's just a counter trend move, uh, then price should run out of steam at 2133. And if it's more than that, price should make a move up to 2141. So that's what's going on on the intraday time frame charts as we speak right now. We'll try to come back to those time permitting at the end of the show so that's what's going on on the play-by-play -play, short-term basis uh let's go take a look at what's going on with the markets overall let's just take a look at some other looks out here so to do that i'm going to change screens give me a moment to do that we'll come back to our black background screens out here and i'll just switch over to the daily time frame uh, and in the daily time frame right now, if you look in the left-hand panel, you've got the ES Mini. And in this chart here, you've got some trend lines. You also have the daily and weekly profiles. It does appear that price is going to go target 45.49.25. Now, that's a real key level. It's especially a real key level come Friday. 
Why? Because if we were to see a close below that profile, now you're in the upper right-hand corner here. This is a weekly time frame chart that we're looking at. That level again, 45, 49, 25. That would give us our first real chink in the armor and a suggestion, a indication that we have an intermediate term change in trend, very much like we did back in February of 2020. So we're nearing the buy the, you can fill in the blank, you buy the dip level. Now, I'm not suggesting that you buy the dip, although I wouldn't be surprised to see a price hold at least this first time down. But maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But 45, 49 and a quarter is a key area to watch. Now, the Russell 2000 is already below. Uh, it's, um, now again, this is a, at the end of the week, not where we're looking at it on Tuesday. It's not Monday, but Tuesday at 1.20 in the afternoon. But that level there is 21.37. So back to the daily time frame charts out here. What else do we have? Well, in the case of the NQ, price has made its way down right to its rising trend lines. These are trend lines coming off of days from October 11th and back on the trading day of October 4th out there. So potential area of support. It is trading below the top of its weekly profile. I only have the top of the weekly profile shown here which is at 15.303. So the NQ back at a potential level of support out there. If this area fails, well, then when it opens up inside of the NQ, got to switch over to this screen, then for the NQ, we'd be looking at a move to the center of its profile. That's at 15.104. Now, that's where price in essence found support last week. Last week, it didn't get all the way down to 15.104. It got down to a level of 15.152. If price were to close this week below 15.104, that's below the center of its bearish structured weekly profile that price closed above it many weeks ago, uh, about, about two months ago. Plus, and typically, if the move is just a counter trend move, that is where price would find support. If price does not find support there, then we're looking at that move to the bottom of that profile, and that's at 14,804. And a close below that says we would have an intermediate term change in trend. Back to the daily time frames out here. In the case of the Dow, it has a one to one, A to B equals CD to the downside. Price projection was 35,709. Price so far is 35,901. So it's about 200, 079 to, what did I say? 079 to, 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 to where are we at? Uh, what's the low? 35,135. Um, you know, that that's pretty close to me to, now, in order for this to generate a buy the D point or a Garley buy pattern, you need some type of bullish reversal candle. I don't expect to see that here. Uh, well, I don't expect to see that today. That's for sure. Whether we were to see that tomorrow or not, that's another question. But what I just simply want to be able to share with you, if you've got the A to B equals CD to the downside, kind of tying into what we're looking at on those short-term time frame charts, it would make sense to have at least a bounce attempt, especially when we take a look at this, the ES being down towards the bottom of the weekly profile, uh, being at a rising trend line in the NQ, nearly completing the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD in the uh, Dow. Uh, now, the Russell 2000 is just a whole other animal out there. And that whole other animal says we should go take a look at its daily, weekly, monthly time frame chart. So on the monthly time frame, if price doesn't hold this area, where we're trading right now, about 2097, that would suggest move back to 2020. I don't mean the year 2020. I mean the price point of 2020. That's the bottom of its monthly profile. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity future contracts for their daily and weekly time frame. So we've taken care of the 30-minute charts. We've taken care of daily and weekly out here. So I think that means we should go take a look at some questions that are going on inside the uh, uh, that, have, that have come in. So I don't want to get too far behind on these. So if you give me a minute just to get rid of the trash ones out here. Okay, thank you, Susanna. Uh, I don't think that's a request. Okay, so we're down to four requests out here. That's perfect. The first one coming in from Tom G., Hey, Tom. Happy New Year to you. Tom writes in, good afternoon, Steve. I'm long UVXY for a couple of weeks, from a couple of weeks ago, wondering what your thoughts are here. guess it all depends on how the VIX closes today. I'm more than 10% or not. Yeah, maybe. But you've been in it for a couple of weeks out here. So let's go take a look at UVXY, see if there's any kind of signals that we can provide for you out here. So on the daily basis for UVXY, price right now, let me just, we're really only going to take a look at the daily chart out here for you, Tom. So on the daily chart, we show that this is now taking on the resistance, the top of its daily profile. And that level is 1343. You're trading at 1367. So if price can close above 1343, it should 
should be able to make its way back to the high from a few days ago, January 10th. That's out at 1448. If pricing close above that, that would suggest a further move higher. You are correct, though. If we do get a one-day rate of change above plus 10 percent, then that's going to go ahead and trigger that pattern. That pattern meaning, let's go take a look at it, that we typically would see some type of bounce or bottom in the marketplace. The last time we got a signal out here, that was on the trading day of January 5th. We had a short-term intraday bounce. That typically took place overnight and into the early morning hours. And then it was kind of a flattish day. Price went ahead and resumed its... Oh, I take it back. We had another one out here. Let me pull this back. We had another one from, uh, oh, from Thursday. And what did we see on Friday? Again, just a slight bounce out here. So, yeah, you would see that. Is that the time to jettison your UVXY? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll come back. I'll see if there's anything else I can find for you, Tom, during this uh, breakout here. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at the UVXY for Tom G out here. So, Tom, as I was looking through all of my charts out here, the chart um, and looking for some type of pattern, something to provide you with. And the 15 minute chart uh, seems to be generating the best signal as it pertains to the oscillator and change line. So I don't know whether you have that or you don't. And, and what I mean by that, if you take a look at this 15 minute chart, we're looking at the red, green, squiggly line out here. And, you know, as long as price is below the oscillator, 
kilometer and change line, it continued to move lower. Once we got above it, you know, we saw that move higher. Uh, then on Friday, we saw, you know, it gave it up, moved lower, made a uh, made a TD nine count bottom. That obviously worked when the uh, market opened uh, this uh, this morning out here and uh, right now price is uh, starting to trade below that oscillator and change on what that suggests here is i want you to prepare for a potential pullback and a pullback inside the uvxy could take it at 1339 first 1321 1321 next and then 1304 if you got a close below 1304 that would signal we could see a move back to 1186 if we don't then you just have price pulling back to support levels out there so you know this is a, a difficult one to trade out here um, and the 10 minute chart actually the oscillator and change line isn't as clear as it was on the 15 minute chart out there but look at the 30 minute time frame chart that's working pretty well too, but it's really the, the 15 and an oscillator and change line and looking for patterns. So that's the best that I can provide to you. I do hope that helps you out, Tom. Thanks so much for writing in and uh, best of luck to you on that uh, trade out there. The next question coming in from David H. in Tomball, Texas. David writes in, please look at Mosaic. This Mosaic about to finish an A to B equals CD to the upside. Well, let's go take a look at ticker symbol MOS. Let's get it on our three time frames out here. MOS, Mosaic. Let's go see uh, if we have an A to B equals CD pattern. So, uh, <laughs> you're looking for one that's finishing up. And I don't see a finishing up A to B equals CD. Even the short one, the, sh the conservative one, would look like this. That didn't help me. Let's try this here. There we go. So the A point out here that I would be using, David, is the low from December 1st. The B point that I would be using out here is the high from January 5th and a retracement right down into support, the bottom of that profile that was on January 6th. The B point had volume of 4.8 million shares, was taken out with 8.5 million shares. Your one-to-one -one on Mosaic takes you up to 45.56. However, David. If we take a look at the B to C retracement, it was only 41%. Typically, when you do less than a 0.618, I don't mean 0.615, I mean, you know, 50% or, or lower, you typically end up with an A to B equals C that's going to do more than a one to one price projection, 4556 being the one to one. So this suggests more likely 4762 or 5023 are game out here. Uh, we also see that price is on the left side of that C to D leg. See, my A to B diagonal matches exactly the C to D diagonal. This says we're on the strong side, and that suggests doing more than a one to one A to B equals C to D to the upside. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame. that A to B equals C. There's a larger one that's out there, too. I did the conservative one. The larger one basically would look like this. We can put multiple A to B equals C to D. I'd start out here. Well, hold on a minute. Let me just do this here. I don't think I was getting the uh, bottom necessarily. There we go. Okay. So to really do this, yeah, I'm still just going to start with that same swing point. So I'm giving you the larger one, but kind of a little bit conservative. My A point I'm going to start with is August 19th. The B point, which had volume of uh, 5.8 million shares, that's uh, back on the uh, trading day of October 20th. And then where I started the A to B equals CD on that small one we looked at, that's the low of December 1st out there. That one to one takes us to 47.69. Now the volume last Friday was was uh, slightly lower, 6.4 million shares, as price was trying to take out a swing with 5.8. So, but look, as long as you get a close about 43.24, either at 43.20 right now, that would suggest that A to B equals CD pattern, either of those, whoops, that we just looked at. Now, let's pull over the white background charts. See, if, Well, first, let me see if there's anything else to show, share with you on the weekly and the monthly. There is. Okay, so your real battle out here at the weekly so it was that swing point. It also happens to be the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. That's at 43.24. So you really need to see a weekly close above that level this week. If you do, then those A to B equals CD patterns that you and I looked at should come to fruition. So price is at a key resistance level. And that's the weekly top of its bearish structured profile out there. I don't have any other topping signals. In fact, everything looks good on the daily with price closed about 42.41 out there. Uh, no, I take that back. Yeah, 42.41. That was a TD9 breakdown level. So that looks good for the daily time frame. The weekly time frame, no other topping signals other than dealing with the top of that profile. So if we can clear that, that suggests higher price, David. And on the monthly chart, looks like it wants to go target 47.68. That is a TD9 breakdown level. If price can close above that, then you've got a strong move to the upside. 
So I hope that helps you out. I know you wanted to also take a look at Southern Copper out there, SCCO. So let me fire those up on this white background chart as well. I'll do that off the screen. And we'll get the uh, black background charts up on our screen as well. So Southern Copper out here, trading right now out at the uh, 6848 level. Brand new daily profile that you have, David. The top of that profile is 6985 resistance. The bottom is at 67.40. It's bullish in structure because price is trading, uh, well, it's bullish in structure because of where the center is located at 68.22. Um, if price can take out that 69.85 level, you should be on your way to 79.16. Now let's pull over the white background charts. And the white background charts will begin with the monthly. And on the monthly chart, what do we have? It looks bullish because price is above its oscillator and change line. So that suggests a move higher. We don't see anything uh, that uh, looks uh, dangerous there. On the weekly time frame, we're above the profile. We're in bar number five of a weekly time frame. The only thing that is caution here is the oscillator and change line did change colors last Friday. So, at, But typically what happens is we don't see price and that line catch up to each other. I'm saying typically until we get some type of topping signal in the weekly. And you're only in bar number five, so we don't have that as we speak just yet. And as long as price remains above 64.85, price should continue to move higher. On the daily time frame for Southern Copper out here, uh, other than the top of that new, oh, I take that back. You do have a TD9 count top. So you really need to see price close above that 69.85 level. So this does suggest to Stevie that Southern Copper... Um, should pull back to test its oscillator and change line. Now, on Friday, it tests the bottom of that new bullish structure profile, 67.40. So your support is really between 65.85 and 67.40. You do have a valid top on a daily basis. That does suggest we should see either a consolidation with inside this profile or maybe a, a quick move down to test that oscillator and change line. What you're looking for here is a test and rejection of that level. If you get that, that's the bullish signal that you would be looking for when it comes to Southern Copper, SCCO. So, Dave, David, thanks so much for writing in, and I uh, hope you have a, a terrific Tuesday. I, I wish you a, a marvelous Monday, but uh, I forgot we, we took that day off. It was a nice day. Oh, was just I got away from everything. Email, everything. Whoa, that was a beautiful thing. It's always nice to do that. Oh, Susanna writes in, and uh, Susanna wants to take a look at uh, BT. There's my eyes. BTC and SQ. So let's go see what BTC is. Bachman Turner, and it's not overdrive, that's for sure. But in BTC, yeah, BTC, that's, are you taking a look at Bitcoin? I'm going to guess you're looking at Bitcoin and you also want to look at Square. So I'll do this. I'll get the Square charts up on our screen and uh, we'll go take a look at, I'll get the Bitcoin charts fired up. We'll go take a look at those. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Square. Ticker symbol there is SQ, trading below the bottom of its daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. If we take a look at what Square has actually done from the lows out here from back in 2020 all the way to the highs that were put in back in August of 2021, we can see it's made a 0.618 retracement level. So it's at an area where it could or should find some type of support. But when we take a look at the daily time frame, we see Rose momentum indicator signal that's triggered here. It needs a bullish reversal candle. Susanna in order to generate some type of buy signal. And then the question is, is 142.79 where a counter trend rally ends? If price were to close above that, then you would be looking to move to 155.67. So the daily says you've got to wait for some type of bullish reversal candle. That is not in just yet. On the weekly time frame chart, this actually suggests that Square could move back to 8406. The reason that I suggest that, this formed a TD9 count uh, two weeks ago. Last week, price closed below that, negated it, tells us about a strong momentum move to the downside. The South Southern change line has changed color. So at some point in time here, we should see price and that line catch up to each other. Would have thought that that would have been uh, be the beginning of last week. That didn't happen. So strong momentum move to the downside is its signal. The monthly time frame, other just getting back to the 0.68 retracement, says, hey, I may want to pull all the way back to 4233. So Square does not look that good out here. Um, in fact, it looks horrible. And uh, other than that, I don't have any kind of signals to provide to you. So, Suzanne, I hope that that helps you out. I know you wanted to take a look at Bitcoin, or I believe it was Bitcoin out there that we're that you were mentioning. So when we take a look at Bitcoin out here, both the weekly chart has a TD9 count bottom. That was last week was the bar number nine. Now, a lower low could form this week on a monthly, on a, I'm sorry, on a weekly chart and still confirm that pattern. But right now you've got a valid TD9 count for the weekly. The daily time frame form a TD9 count count pattern that was about five six days ago out there so you've got two td9 count bottoms price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile what we do know is that 44080 which was the top of its daily profile that level was uh, tested twice last week that's a significant resistance level the question now is and if price closes below its oscillator and change line which is at 41894 that would then suggest to move back to support and that'd be 4392 the ultimate support out here for bitcoin would be the low from that hammer candle which is at 39 9470. If price were to close below that, this expression is if you're long, you're wrong. That would mean Stevie would be wrong out here because I am long uh, Bitcoin based upon those TD nine count bottom patterns out there. So, Susanna, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much. Uh, should we look at the next contract? Well, it, uh, we, we can, uh, Mr. Bill. It doesn't change, I don't think, for a couple of days out there when we roll over to uh, February, but I'll put that up there uh, for you. Uh, since you requested it, 0222 out here, and we'll let that uh, populate. 
and uh, see if there's any other information. I think we're going to see the same pattern. It will take a moment for my chart to actually catch up with the data because I know we don't have a hammer candle there. But here you've got the TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame. The top of its profile also held as resistance. That's at 44.293. And support on the February contract would be 40, 45.99. Those would be the levels. On the weekly time frame out here, you've also got the TD9 count. So you've got the same patterns out here, just maybe a different profile level out there. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the Bitcoin, whether it's a January or the February contracts out there. Uh, so let's take a look at our next request out here. And it turns out we don't have any more. Now, that's a beautiful thing. Um, John had asked inside the Tiger's Den, you're welcome. John had asked inside the Tiger's Den if uh, I saw any uh, pivotal support near the 15270 level for the NQ. And uh, John, other than price hitting uh, trend lines out here, so rising trend lines on the daily basis, so that's not at the level that you were looking at. I mentioned uh, inside the Tiger's Den that 15104 is my pivotal level. That is the center of that bearish structured weekly profile. And if price were to close below that, that would would then suggest to move back to the 14804 level out there. So that's the only thing that I've got. Well, and so that takes care of that question. I don't believe there are any other questions inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, just trying to scan through there. But if there is, or you want me to take a look at something for any of you denters out there, just go ahead and post it in now and I'll be happy to get to it. So we've taken care of all of the questions out here. We've got about another three and a half minutes in this segment. So what do we want to look at? I'll tell you what we can go look at. Let's go take a look at volume. Let's go see what the volume metrics looks like out here. And we'll do that by taking a look at the index ETFs. So let's begin by, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just simply expand out each of the charts. That way we don't get confused. So what we do know is that price is trading inside the spies, that is, inside its December 3rd swing point. That had volume of $137 million. We're at $60 million so far. Uh, so price is pulling back in that swing point with light volume. There's a junior swing point. That junior swing point took place on January 10th. That had volume of 119 million. Again, you're back with 60. You're testing that level on light volume. If price rejects 456.60, that means closes above 456.60, does it on less than, uh, what was the volume there? Uh, 119 million shares. It'll have a rejection of a swing point. And that would then suggest to move up to 463 to 465. So the SPY pulling back on light volume. The NQ or the QQQ series ETF trading into a swing point from the trading day of January 10th. That had volume of 91 million shares, 47 million shares. Now, ideally, what you'd like to see, because it's just trading inside the swing point, hasn't tested anything, is a test of 369.31. That would be ideal. If you test that on lighter volume, you can't bust them down. Price will try to bust them up. Now, bust them up could mean just to move up to 379.20. So you've got two, the SPIs and the NQ back on lighter volume. Let's go take a look at the Dow Diamonds. You've got the A to B equals CD pattern. The one to one takes us to 350.207. We've gotten down pretty close to that level. The volume is Price is passing the B point, which the B point happens to be January 10th, has volume of 8 million shares. You're at 5.5. So it's still lighter. I would assume it's going to be lighter coming in. So here you could form uh, what uh, Tom likes to call a tiger Gartley pattern. Now, a tiger Gartley pattern could not form, would not form, until you get the bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. But what we do know is price is pulling, uh, as well, all we know, it's not, there's the swing point, price isn't near the swing point. So it's just past the B point with light volume out there. So we don't have that swing point test. Yeah, we don't have that. The only way we get that swing point test or a swing point test would be for price to get down to 350.38 out there. So that takes us to our last one. That's the IWM. What's the IWM doing? Well, the IWM is testing its swing point low for the trading day of, Jan of De December 20th. 49 million shares. You're back with 28 million shares. If price can close above 208.76 today, then what you have is a rejection of that swing point on lighter volume, and that would suggest a move higher. Now, that move higher, the first move higher would be to the 212.63. So we look at, as of 149 in the afternoon, as we take a look at the volume metrics for the SPY, which is testing the swing point on lighter volume, and if it closes above 456.60, 
We're at 456.65 right now. That would be a rejection of that swing point. The Q is moving into the swing point with lighter volume, but hasn't actually tested it. So it doesn't have any kind of confirmation there. Inside the Dow Diamonds, you might have a Tiger Gertley buy pattern that sets up, but that would be not until, well, if you got a bullish reversal candle today, you could get a hammer candle today. So you want to be on the lookout for that. And the Russell is also testing a key swing point, doing it on lighter volume, but price needs to close above 208.76. You're at 208.76. 77 as we speak right now. So those would be the levels to be watching out there. Um, question if we can take a look at SoFi. So we're going to do that. SoFi is how we'll end the show. S-O-F-I is the uh, ticker symbol. Good game at SoFi Stadium last night. That was the first time this year I've seen the Rams look like a team. If they can, if they can play like that, uh, they're likely to go all the way. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got the charts for SoFi Technologies up on our screen. It does look horrible. It's trading below the bottom of its weekly and daily profiles. There's no monthly profile. But price is trading all the way back into its IPO. And as long as this remains below 1304, odds favor it'll go test the 1037 level. Uh, that's where it likely is headed to. As we look at our white background charts out here, no bottoming uh, pattern on the uh, daily time frame. We are in wave number seven, potentially. But really, this road's momentum indicator signal. You need to see a bullish reversal candle and then a close 
close above its oscillator and change line. That's currently at 1306. Weekly chart out here as we take a look at it. It has no bottoming signal. The monthly's got no bottoming signal. So, so far, unless it forms some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that daily roads meant to indicator signal should go target the bottom of that monthly swing point. It could get below that as well out there. Uh, we did have a request that came in from Rich who wanted to take a look at XBI. And it uh, looks to me like it could be finally uh, setting up a bottom. So let's go take a look at XBI. The daily time frame uh, today will become the bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count pattern. So the cool thing here, uh, Rich, is that if you see a close below today's low, whatever that ends up being, then you know there's no bottom signal. Otherwise, there could be. The first move would take you up to the bottom of that profile, 101.61, and then 103.17 above that. A close above 103.17, you get to 106.29. So that's what I see on the daily time frame. The weekly chart out here for uh, XBI, it doesn't have anything for us. Uh, nothing to uh, – so it's really the daily that you're looking at for any kind of a turn out there. So I hope that helps out. I also know you wanted to take a look at – I've got about 15 seconds for this. Lenar, L-E-N is a ticker symbol. So I take a look at Lenar. Here's the daily time frame. Uh, what do I see? I see price trading below the bottom of its daily profile, very likely maybe targeting 99.13. I don't know what the volume is. It's going into a prior swing point. I'd look at that, but looks like 99.13 may be its price target. Uh, it does have some support at the bottom of its weekly profile. It's about $100 in change out there. So I'm uh, sorry we couldn't fully get to Lennar out there, but I do hope, I do want to thank you for writing in. And folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. Your favorite polar bears up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home, and I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.